Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Another changelog episode. Some more changes and some more updates for you guys. So first and foremost, we've obviously got the Saga launch. So that's going on right now while we're recording this. So by the time this video goes live, Saga is out, introduced to the world. You guys can get your Sagas. Um, they should have gotten an email about it if you pre-ordered or whatever. So you should be able to already get that set up. And just for reference, um, for those of you guys who maybe aren't getting a Saga or planning on getting one, you don't actually need one to develop on Solana Mobile Stack. So it's just something worth mentioning. Um, you can still try out all kinds of different things with the stack without one. Yeah, and another note is that if you do want to develop on Saga, I believe when this video is live, you, there should be documentation as well as tutorials on how to do that. Um, if it is, we'll put a link in the description. Um, definitely try them out. Go through the Hello World and build your first app for Saga. It'd be really cool to see that happening. Um, then other news for for this is that the, this week we're going to have yet another core community call. Um, these are where multiple of the core engineers on Solana come together to discuss a specific topic or upcoming change. They're usually big changes with the actual cluster. Um, we'll see what the agenda is soon, um, and you can go ahead and check the agenda on the link provided in the description. Nice. Yeah, definitely check that out. It's really, really cool. It gets you up close and personal with what's going on. And then another thing, too, to announce is um, Helium is launching on Solana. So pretty much when this video goes live, right, Jacob? Like when this video drops, they'll be pretty much debuting their Helium migration to Solana. Yes, there, there's going to be a migration out from their Helium chain to the Solana chain. Um, Noah Prince has been talking about it all on Twitter. Um, we'll also have a kind of interview live with speaking with Noah Prince on like how does Helium work, how does the migration work, um, and understanding like what can a Helium developer do now that we are on Solana. Uh, lots of really cool things that you can do. Look forward to that. Cool. What do we got in the way of um, proposals? Sure. So this week's proposal is uh, there's a new one um, called it's SIMD46. There, it's automatically repair and start for a cluster restart. So what happens is that like, hey, when the cluster is having issues, congestion, or something is going wrong, uh, let's try to have the cluster automatically repair itself. Um, so you have very limited amount of downtime. Um, and you can get back to normal uh, normal business on on chain. Um, so, very quick summary of it. Um, this is a very incredibly high level summary. Definitely check out the full description and the SIMD itself. Um, but the basically step one is like everyone freezes. There's a mechanism that decides there should be a restart happening. So everybody freezes. They make all blocks that can potentially be the the slot propagated to everyone on the network. Um, they make all last votes propagated as well. Um, now they, they try to decide what is the optimistic slot um, that we can choose from for the restart just automatically within code. If they can figure that out, um, at least 70% is, I believe, the number. If they can figure that out, um, automatically choose that restart just magically and keep going. Like, so you'll have an incredibly small amount of downtime. If not, you do the normal thing, you halt and you wait for human intervention so that they can decide on the optimistic slot. So this should, this proposal should be able to limit any type of, any type of downtime in the future. Um, if there ever is, I hope there never is again though. I was just going to say that <laughs> um, <laughs> just in case. But no, that's pretty cool. That's a big um, SIMD. I know a lot of work was put into that. You said it was like two months in the making at least, right, to get this thing put together? Yes, they've been discussing a lot back and forth. And originally, like the document that they were building on was very lengthy with, I think, like six to seven different ideas of how to do this. And this is the one that's making to a SIMD. Yeah, good to see. Check it out, guys. Um, I believe that'll probably get mentioned in the community call as well, right? I, I would yeah. expect so, yes. Cool. Yeah, so check that out too. Um, moving on to some resources that we saw across Solana. Um, Ryan from Foundations University team has been doing quite a bit with like GPT and OpenAI. And most recently, he revealed a tool that basically lets you use AI to audit your Solana contracts, right? So you can, I believe it supports native and anchor. 
and it's packaged into like a CLI tool. Um, Ryan mentioned that the plan is kind of to integrate that into like your GitHub actions or just use it locally for testing and, and kind of like auditing on your own. So definitely give that a look. He's on Twitter. Um, we should have a link in the description, but that's a really cool tool. And you can probably just hit him up to see like how you can get your hands on it or try it out. Yeah, really cool tool. Uh, it's very cool what you can now do with like chat, the open GPT, open AI stuff um, in order to build on Solana. And this is just probably the first of many tools, both from Ryan and as well as the community. Um, moving yep. on to commits this week, um, there was kind of a few commits that we're interested in. Um, one of them was the get recent prioritization fees. Um, so this has been an RPC uh, call for a while, but it's not on mainnet. Um, and what it means is, hey, we have priority fees now on the network, but how do you determine what around you should pay for within priority fees? You can do that by looking at past history um, because currently or in the current state Solana does not have a mempool so you can't just pull from the mempool to figure out what are the priority fees that people are willing to pay you actually have to look at recent ones and understand like kind of guess guesstimate like in the future what the prioritization fees will be does that kind of like loosely work like what are you using to guesstimate there like you can see through the get re recent prioritization fees to understand like what is say for example last block um, for this NFT mint, uh, people were paying two uh, Lamperts or something um, as their prioritization fee, and then the block four maybe it was one, so you can kind of guess like okay I should pay probably about one um, or two, um, and then maybe if I definitely want to get it I double to four. Um, you, there's usually there's a whole bunch of different algorithms you can apply in order to kind of guess what will work for your for getting your transaction through. Okay, so it's almost kind of like Ethereum's like max gas fee or like set gas fee sort of feature. In a way, yeah, in a way, there you set your compute limit. Like if you want to do it that way, you don't have to. Yep. And then the other big thing, it's not really a commit, but something that is happening is everybody's been interested in uh, confidential transfers um, and when they will come out with token 2022. Um, so with some recent changes, confidential transfers may not actually require the transaction re size increase in order to be deployed to the network. Um, so that means token 2022 will come may come a lot sooner as well as the confidential transfers to the network as like, We'll definitely be keeping track of when it is launching, but it's really cool to see. Yeah, absolutely. Keep a close eye on token 2022 and keep a close eye on compression. We mentioned it before, but both of those things are going to spin out to a lot of awesome features that you'll be able to use. So whenever that kind of stuff goes live, especially what you're just describing, Jacob, with the confidential transfers, um, definitely get your hands on it. Make full use of it. We'll try to get some kind of like reference examples out for you guys. I think that's really all for our change log today. Have anything else on your end or no? That's it. It was a good amount of changes this week. Cool. Well, I'll catch you guys next week. Later. Bye.